Father, we thank you this morning for another opportunity to stand before your people. We pray, Lord, that every heart be touched, that every family be mended and made well. We pray for every relationship today, Lord. Pray, Lord, you take the strain out of the communication. Holy Spirit, lead us to a place, hallelujah, a place called peace. Let your please, peace flow like a river. We thank you now and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. God bless you. May heaven help you. It's a good day. It's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. And we thank God for the worship team. Amen. We thank amen. God for each of you. Thank you, brothers. Hallelujah. Such skilled uh, artists, musicians, ministers before the Lord. Amen. The church is being blessed, saints. We're being blessed because the presence of God comes and he, he touches us and he communes with us. Amen. And I'm praying that God will touch you that are on the Zoom and you that look at YouTube and such. Uh, we pray that the Lord will minister to you like he ministers to us in the sanctuary. I see the day where the sanctuary is full, but also there's multitudes on the Zoom and the Facebook and other things that will come after that. Because 20 years ago, we, didn't, we only faced the book, the Bible. Now we Google and face Facebook. Amen. And sometimes Facebook overrides what the Word of God says. Some of our friends and our chat rooms override what does say at the Lord. But I encourage you to hold on. Hold on to the word of God. Mm. Because the Bible says that uh, heaven and earth shall pass away. But the word of the Lord does not pass away. This is our faith, y'all. This is what we believe. Our compass is not mama and daddy's teaching. Our compass is the word of God. And until you find yourself in the word, hallelujah. Oh, what can I say? You have to find yourself in the word, saints. Amen. Mm, we love mom and daddy and we love good teaching and all this kind of stuff. But you got to find yourself in the word. In him I live. In him I move and in him I have my being. Now, let's look at Genesis chapter 24. Uh-huh. Verse uh, no, yeah, 24, verse 67. 24. Abraham, we left off with Abraham getting Isaac a wife, right? So now he's got one, and look what happens. In Genesis 24, verse 67, Then Isaac brought her into his mother's Sarah's tent, and he took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after, the, uh, after his mother's death. Y'all see that? So now the Bible is really giving us a, cl a clue that the transition is happening. We're going from Abraham to, uh, to Isaac. Now Abraham only really uh, kept going for another chapter. Mm -hmm. Because it says in, let's see, it says in 25 and 9, that Ishmael and Isaac buried Abraham. Can you all see that? Look, look at uh, 25 and 9. And his sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in a cave of Machpelah, Mac which is before Mamre in the field of Ephraim, the sons of Zeph. Then verse 10, the field which Abraham purchased from the sons of Heth. There Abraham was buried and Sarah was, was buried also, his wife. So y'all see now Abraham is done. We, we talked about Abraham, the, the blessings of Abraham and all this. Isaac only lasts for a chapter or two. It really shifts to Jacob. Okay. So we'll touch uh, 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 Isaac a little bit and then we'll start beginning to introduce Jacob. And the theme of the message today is flawed, but still chosen. You're going to see some things today. You're going to see a, a, a compulsive, deceitful man. 
He, he's a liar, Bobby. I mean, he's a big one. You, you wouldn't want to hang out with Jacob. None of us. Not a one of us will run with Jacob because he's a lying something. You don't know when. Because my, my, oh, No, let me not go there. Uh, I know some lying folk. They just lie. They, they, it's, a, it's, a, it's a preference. Isn't it? They just lie. And this dude was tricky. He, he, ooh wee, he reminds me of a colonizer. People who use Christ and come and tell you Jesus, but at the same time, they're prepping you to take your land. The, the, and and uh, the, the uh, Babylonian people were like that. They come and look at you, befriend you, and then sneak around and stab you in the back. Let's, 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 uh, and I got to show y'all something. Woo, I, I, I studied this and it baffled me. How can God bless a liar? I mean, just show sure enough deceive you. Now let's look here and, and, and give Isaac a little, a little do. Isaac in 25 and 20, we start seeing him what he's capable of doing. He was 40 years old when he got married and uh, he, um, he prayed for his wife. Uh, Genesis 25 and 20, Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah as a wife, the daughter of Bethel, the Syrian of Padam Aram, the sister of Laban, the Syrian. Now Isaac pleaded, Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife. Look at this husbands and men, you can cry out for your wife. If she's a little crazy, cry out. If she's off and super hard to get along with, cry out. <laughs> Verse 21, you know we deal with some wild women. Some women stuck on credit. Now look at verse 21. Now Isaac pleaded. That means he begged God, please let this woman have a baby. She's worrying me. And the Lord granted the plea and Rebecca, his wife, conceived. Now I want y'all to be patient because it was 20 years. That's a long time to be trying to have a baby and you ain't having no baby. That's a long time to be trying to do anything and it ain't happening. But we got to stick with it. Don't let the world deceive us. Jesus is still the, lo the Lord of lords and king of kings. 20 years. And how do I know it was 20 years? Because down here in verse 26, it says, this is 25 and 26. After his brother came out and his, uh, uh, wait a minute, and his hand took hold. No, no, no. I want to go up to 24. So when her days were fulfilled, for her to give birth. Indeed, there was twins in her, in her womb. Mm -hmm. And the first came out red. This is uh, Rebecca having a baby by Isaac. He was like a hairy garment over, over all. He was red and hairy. So they called his name Esau. And afterwards, his brother came out and his hand hit, took hold of his heel. That's, that's significant. So his name was called Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old. There you go. 20 years they tried to have a baby. That's a long time. You start thinking, it's not for me. Amen. Sometimes God will hold a thing to show you that he's God. And I want to tell you today that the Lord has allowed me to track the seed from the promise of Eve all the way to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And if you're involved in the seed, nothing can hinder your life. Nothing can lock you down. You'll you have setbacks, yes, but God will keep on working on you. So here we see that Isaac prayed. Then another thing that happened with Isaac is that he dwelt in, the, uh, uh, in Gerah and he obeyed the Lord because a famine rose up. Chapter 26, there was a famine in the land besides the first famine. That was in the days of Abraham. There's another one. Amen. So what happened to Abraham is happening to his son. And so Isaac uh, was told, don't go down to Egypt. And he didn't do it. And in verse 12, Isaac sold in the land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. Do you know what a hundredfold means? It doesn't mean a hundred percent. It means a hundred times. So say you put $20,000 in the market. 
you would have to multiply it a hundred times. So this is the grace that we want on our life. Not just that we prosper, but that in one year we get to the level of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That in one year, a hundred times, I haven't experienced that, you haven't experienced that, but it's possible. He obeyed God. He didn't go down in Egypt and he stayed where God told him to stay. And God blessed him in one year. My God, if God would bless us like that, that means the hundred thousand dollars you made have to be multiplied by a hundred. Say you make you and your wife or you alone make a hundred thousand dollars. Do you know how much money that is? I'm raising your thinking now. Come on now, we in the word. That means $10 million in one year. That's how we got to think. Grace Fellowship, it's a new day. Now just receive it. Don't rebuke it. Don't, don't, don't hold me down. Don't say, Pastor, it's not possible. Let your mind, come on, y'all. Let your mind go. There's some people that make way more than that. Why not you? The Bible says he blessed him in one year, a hundred. Yes, you've been blessed. You've been promoted, but not how God wants. The earth is the Lord's. Hello, y'all repeat that after me. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And they that dwell in it. The thing that's wrong with us is we've been preached poor equals God and rich is the devil. That's a lie. There's some good rich folks. There's some nice rich folks. There's some folks that are philanthropists. And some of you all got money too. Are you evil? No. Let that thing go. Poor does not mean God and rich does not mean the devil. The Bible tells me that Job was the richest man in the East. Hello, somebody. God wants to do it for grace. And we got to open up our mind. A hundred thousand is not enough. I made that back in 1991. That's 20 years ago. And don't y'all plateau at no hundred. And I ain't talking about a prosperity gospel. I'm talking about your skills in the marketplace producing. Hallelujah, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Do not plateau at a hundred. Six figures is not enough. God wants us to take us higher where we have no worry and the overflow. We taking care of families. We got two or three houses that we can say, oh, you, you suffering, go and stay, stay, stay there. Take three months and recover. Now we don't give them the house unless the Lord speaks to us, but we let them stay there for a little while. Then we pick them up. You understand what I'm saying? So in one year, 26 and 12, then Isaac sold in the land. You got to have something to sow. You can't eat up everything or purchase everything. He, he, Isaac sowed in the land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And then the next verses talk about how he prospered. He prospered so much that they sent him away. They became envious. And that's what will happen in your life. As you prosper, people will become jealous and envious. That's why rich folks don't talk too much. When God starts overflowing, you just keep your mouth, okay? Somebody say, praise the Lord. He endured the envy of the Philistines. Mm. And then as he prospered, the herdsmen of Gerah began to fight him. He would go dig a well and they would come and fight him. So Isaac was blessed. And then finally, the word Rehoboth is used in the 20 ver 20th verse of chapter 26. Rehoboth means I finally found my place. After he tried and tried and tried and he kept on and he kept on, he finally found his place. We got to find our place in 2021. Mm, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Just lift your hands for a second. Father, may we find our Rehoboth in 2021. That place where we can dig a well and we don't have to contend with those who are jealous of us. Hey, hallelujah. May we find our Rehoboth this year, Lord. Let me find that place where people aren't jealous and envious and we can expand and flow in the fullness of your grace. 
Thank you for grace on our life to produce, Lord. Somebody in this room is going to go to 200,000, 300,000, but you got to get comfortable with it. You got to find your Rehoboth. You can't be one, you can't let money throw you off. Money is a tool. So God got to get your spirit ready. And today is that day where you become ready and, and okay with having a lot. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. For my Rehoboth, it's our minds. We can't handle it. And that's the delay. It's not God, but it's how you're thinking. We got to rise up. Come on, somebody. We got to rise up. What daddy did good. Mama did good. Your neighborhood did, but he wants you higher. God wants you higher. And I break that mentality right now. Some of you all should have already been millionaires. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, what am I seeing here? I'm seeing a miracle. God's transforming. He's going to give you your Rehoboth if you keep on. If you keep on asking, Lord, give me wisdom. Give me grace. Let me, let me do it like you do. Let me see myself like you see me. You, you looking in the mirror and seeing a man. And now God is, God is seeing Israel. You still seeing Jacob. Hallelujah. And he wants to elevate today. I feel an elevation in the room. Lord, send Rehoboth. Lord, send Rehoboth. May Rehoboth hit your heart today. May you, re ah, hey my, God give me my Rehoboth. Oh Lord, let me see myself like you see me. Oh, but, oh Father, you bless me so much, but there's yet more that you want to do. You want me to be able to take care of families, take care of men and women who need a helping hand. So touch me now, God. Feel my heart and let me find my Rehoboth. Hey, thank you, Lord. Somebody say yes. Quickly, we're moving on. After, after he found his Rehoboth, he began to worship God. That's in 25. He made covenant with Am Am Abimelech. But now, now, I'm bringing in now the family. You see how Isaac was doing, and he was doing well. But let me bring in the family. Mm. Look at verse number uh, 24. No, is it 34 of 26. Chapter 26, verse 34. Hallelujah. Thank you. Now, Isaac had two sons, didn't he? Two. Well, the first one was red and hairy. And the second one was smooth-skinned and was not red. And when they was coming out, the other twin put his hand on the heel. Uh -huh, that's significant. All right, here... While Isaac was being multiplied and blessed and a hundredfold, when Esau was 40 years old, he took, a, he took wives of Judah, of Judith, uh, why, he took as wives Judith, the daughter of Beri, the Hittite, and Basmouth, Basmeth, the daughter of Elon and the Hittite. Now, most of the boys got married at 40, right? Look at the next verse. Right while Isaac was being blessed, this boy starts going south on him. And they were a grief of mine to Isaac and Rebecca. Family issues, drama, dynamics. Uh-huh. But now Esau seemed like he just did his own thing. Jacob stayed in the house close to his mom and daddy. Mm. It's not always good to run out and do your own thing. Amen, somebody. So let's get into this here. Flawed, but still chosen. Keeping your the back of your head that Esau ran off and got some women that, that, that Rebecca just couldn't stand. It's family dynamics. You can, ha you can raise your children right, and then they can get hooked up with the wrong one. When they came to the table, they would pick their teeth. Uh-huh. They wouldn't wash their hands. They wouldn't help after the meal was served. They come in with shorts way up here. Rebecca was a sanctified woman. She went, uh, hey, she prayed and inquired of the Lord, and God answered her. When she was pregnant, there was a, some conflict in her womb. And she said, Lord, what is this? And he said, two nations is in you. 
One's going to be wild, but the older will serve the younger. She, so she knew how to pray. But these girls didn't know nothing about praying. Time for prayer at dinner, they bring out a little dial and set it in front of the plate. They worship idols. <laughs> Come on, y'all, talk to me. There was some drama in the home. You don't, grief don't mean that everything was going good. These girls was wearing Rebecca out. A lot of times men just look at it and say, oh, Lord. But a woman, she studies it for detail so she can do something about it. Hello, somebody. Talk to me. She's going to get them girls out of there. Some kind of way, so they ain't being invited to dinner no more. You come with them shorts way up, you're behind and all that. Uh-uh. And then their fragrance wasn't right. Rebecca said, let's pray. And they going somewhere else, saying some other gods and things like that. Would y'all deal with it, stand for it? And this lady was troubled by these, these women that he got. All the training that she did for 40 years. And now he go pick that one. So now let's get into the message for today. Flawed, but still chosen. Mm. Look at this man here. I, now we switch. Isaac don't, don't do very much more. We go into the 27th uh, 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 chapter now. And this is where we're going to reside for the next 20 minutes. Now it came to pass, verse 1 of 27, when Isaac was old, his eyes were so dim that he could not see. He went blind, y'all. He's about 100 or so now, plus. His eyes were so dim that he could not see. Then Esau, his older son, uh, said to him, my, my, uh, he said to Esau, my son, and he answered, here am I. Then he says, behold, now I am old. I do not know the days of my death. Now, therefore, please take your weapons, your quiver and your bow and go out and into the field and hunt for me and make me the savory food such as I love and bring it to me so that I may eat and bless you. Watch this now. Now, Rebecca was listening. And them wild girls was coming up in her head. I ain't going to have that. You ain't going to bless this boy and he take over all the land. And then them fools come up in here. This Now, I'm just giving y'all what ain't written in the scriptures. Amen. Then Rebecca was listening when Isaac spoke to Esau, his, his sons. And Esau went to the field. Now, watch here. So, Rebecca spoke to Jacob. Now, here's the son that she wants to be the heir. And Esau has already sold his birthright for some food, right? So Rebecca says, let me make this thing happen now. So she gets Jacob to do something, doesn't she? Verse 8, now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to what, what I will command you. Verse 9, go now to the flock and bring me from, the, from their two choice kids. I'll make the savory food. From then, from for, from them of you for your father, such as he loves. I know what he like. The boy make good food, but I can do it uh, just a tad bit better. Verse ten. Then you shall take it to your father that he may eat, that you may bless him before his death. And Jacob said to this verse eleven. And Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Look, Esau, my brother, is hairy. He's a hairy man. And I am a smooth-skinned man. Perhaps my father will feel me and, and, and shall seem to be deceived and shall seem to be a deceiver. I shall seem. And I shall bring a curse on myself, not a blessing. But his mother said to him, let your curse be on me, my son. Only obey my voice. Go and get them for me. And he went and so forth and so on. Then verse 15, then Rebekah took the choice clothes clothes of her elder son which were with her in the house and put them on Jacob her younger son here we go verse number nine verse number 18 so he went to his father's and said my father and he says here am I and watch what Jacob I mean Isaac says who are you something going on somebody's trying to fool somebody who are you? Jacob says to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done just as you asked, just as you told me. Please arise, sit, eat of gain, and your soul may be blessed. But Isaac said to his son, how is it that you went so quickly? Uh, questions. Because the Lord had brought, brought it to me, Isaac said, or, or Jacob said. 
Then Isaac said to Jacob, come here, come near to me, that I may feel. I know my, my son Esau is a hairy man, whether you are really my son or not. Verse 22, so Jacob went near and he felt him and said, the voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. So he did not recognize him because of the hands where were Harry and his brother Esau's hand, like his brother. So he blessed him. Look at verse 24. Then he said, are you really my son Esau? He knows something's up. Something ain't right. Something don't feel right. Because people carry a feeling. When you're blind, your senses go up. You, when, you, when you close your eyes and you start feel everything, touch comes better, smell comes better, insights come better, and he's sensing something's wrong. So he says, come on near me again. Mm. Verse number 25, he said, bring it near me and I will eat it, my son. So he did it and he brought it near. And, and uh, then verse 26, he wanted to smell him. The touch was kind of funny. The voice was funny. Then he says, come, 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 kiss me. He wanted to smell him. See if you really, he really, who he says he is. And he did all of that. And then in verse 27, look out. Here he comes. Surely the smell of my son is like the smell of the field, which the Lord has blessed. Therefore, my God give to give you of the dew of heaven of the fatness of the earth and plenty of grain and wine. Let people serve you and nations bow down to you. Be master over your brethren and, and let your mother's sons bow down to you. Curse be everyone who curses you and bless be uh, uh, those who bless you. May you receive the father's blessings. Hallelujah. May you receive the, 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 the man of God in your life speaking over you. So here it is now. Jacob has come in and acted like Esau. He's deceived his father. And he's taken away not only the birthright, but the blessing. Mm, Jesus. Hallelujah. How in the world. Can this happen? How in the world can uh, the blessing that is in Abraham, that is now in Isaac, be conferred to Jacob, who is deceiving his father? The question I, I, I came up with is, Isaac may have been deceived, but God wasn't. So how did God allow this thing to happen how can god have a man so flawed but still he's chosen we first have to look at 25 and 23. in 25 and 23 when rebecca inquires of the lord the lord responds like this this is in genesis 25 and 23 two nations are in your womb two people are shall be separated from you one people shall be stronger than the other. The older shall serve the younger. This was the prophetic word before the babies came out. So one of the manifestations is something has to cause Jacob to switch places with Esau. Esau's in the first place, but the, but the spirit and in heaven, it's saying no. Jacob is in the first place. So one of the explanations why God didn't stop it could be that there was a word over Jacob's life. That could be one possibility. There is a second possibility, and it's called birthright. The birthright of the elder son was sold by word to Jacob. And birthright means you come first, or you get two-thirds of the land where the younger gets one third of the land. That could be another explanation, but it gets deeper than that. And the way, the reason that it gets deeper than that in, in Genesis chapter 36, verse eight, something made me pause. I jumped ahead y'all. Look at, look at Genesis 38. 
36 and 8. And this is for all you people who are into English and words and things like that. So Esau dwelt in Mount Seir. And it says, Esau is Edom. Mm. And Edom is supposed to just mean red. Hallelujah. But then I thought about Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah 63. Don't quote me on that. It says, who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments of Bozrah? And, and you're, 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 there's blood all over you. This is where Isaiah sees Jesus taking, taking the battle up for us. And so I said, why does the Bible put a sentence, a period after, so Esau dwelt in Mount Seir, and then it says, Esau is Edom. And that screamed at me. So I, I researched Edom and the Edomites. And God don't like Edom <laughs> at all. Matter of fact, he hates Edom. And so God is dealing with uh, uh, this uh, uh, Edom. And that could be another reason that God doesn't stop it. So in Isaiah 63, it says... Uh, that, that Jesus is coming from a battle. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he's won the battle, but his garments are stained. Put up Isaiah 63. I want you, to, I just want you to hear this one. Isaiah 63. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments of Bozrah? The one, see how that one is capitalized? The one who is glorious in his apparel, traveling in his greatness, the greatness of his strength. I speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Verse number two. Who, why is your apparel red and your garments like one who treads out the winepress? I have trodden the winepress alone and from and from the people no one was with me for I have trodden them in my anger and trampled them in my fury. Their blood is sprinkled upon my garments and I have stained all my robes. For the day of vengeance is in my heart and the year of my redeemed has come. Mm, that's Jesus fighting the battles for us, but he uses Edom. So if Esau is Edom, God don't like Edom. Let's take it a little further to go to Malachi chapter one and you'll see something that's amazing mm. in malachi chapter one it says that god loved jacob <laughs> but esau hey malachi one the burden of the word of the lord to israel by malachi i have loved you saith the lord yet you say in what way have i loved you malachi Chapter 1, verse 2. Was not Esau Jacob's brother, says the Lord. Yet Jacob I have loved. Hey. But Esau I have hated and laid waste his mountains, his heritage for the jackals of the wilderness. Oh, what is God doing here? Verse number 4. Even though Edom... Has said we have been impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they may build, but I will throw down. God had a chosen one. And even though he was a liar, God still worked miracles for him. Hallelujah. I'm going someplace. Y'all hold on now. Verse 4 of Malachi 1, even though Edom has said we have been impoverished, we will be, return and build the desolate ruin. Thus saith the Lord, they may build, but I will throw down. They shall be called the territory of the wicked and the people against whom they will, that the Lord will have indignation forever. God has a seed. And his seed started with Eve. It flows down through the nations and through time. And everyone that is connected to the seed is protected, is shielded, is blessed, is given things. But those who are not part of the seed, oh God, 
May heaven help them because the Lord is against them because they won't serve God. Hallelujah. And we who are born again, we serve God, don't we? We bless the Lord with all our hearts, with all our soul, and with all our spirit. Now let's go over to the New Testament. In Romans chapter 9, uh, the Apostle Paul picks up the story about Esau and about Jacob. And he talks in a, 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 a way in which we can all understand. <clears throat> because God has a word for the Gentiles. And that word came through the Apostle Paul. So we pick it up at verse number 6. Romans chapter 9, verse number 6. But it is not that the word of God has taken no effect. For they are not all Israel who are of Israel. Nor are they all children because they are the seed of Abraham. But in Isaac your seed shall be blessed. <laughs> this leads to Jacob and Esau. Verse number 8. That is, those who are the, are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as seeds. For this is the word of promise. At this time, I will call, I will come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also conceived by one man, even our father Isaac, for the children not yet being born, nor having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to the election, might stand, not, a, not of works, but of him who called. It was said of her, the older shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated. There's some things in your life that tried to trap you. There's some things in your life that tried to bring you down. But I'm telling you that whether you are perfect or not, God has a way of raising you up. Flawed, but yet chosen. So when you ask the question, why did God bless this deceiver? It's because he was chosen. He was chosen before he was formed. He was chosen before he was born. So you ask the question, how then? Again, we ask, how can God bless a liar? And how can God bless someone who deceives? Why didn't Isaac discipline Jacob? Why did the heavens open over Jacob's life when he left his home? And how is it that Jesus spoke to Jacob? There is only one answer. There is only one conclusion. Jacob carried a righteous seed. Jacob carried the nation of Israel in his belly. Levi, Reuben, Judah, all of them was in Jacob. And I'm asking you today, what is in you? Why are you succeeding? Why are you doing well? Is it just your intellect? Is it just your looks? Is it just the way you handle yourself? I say no. You that are born again have something. Hey, hallelujah down on the inside of you that God is protecting. Now we must turn our focus to God. We must turn our focus away from the blessings to the blessor. It's not just about you. It's about you fulfilling what God says you have. Jacob started out a liar, but he became the father of a nation. Hallelujah. He became the righteous seed of God and God blessed him mm, there was something inside of Jacob that would ultimately be, ultimately be used hallelujah put up Malachi 1 and 11 and there is something inside of you that God wants to use uh huh God ultimately has people in the lineage of the seed that he wants to use to bring about reformation for from the rising of the sun, even to the going down of the same, the Lord says, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. You and I are not Jews. We were not born in Israel or born under the Jewish umbrella. But we still must bring greatness to the name of God. 
And I say to you uh, uh, that the fragrance or the incense that you send up before God, in every place incense shall be offered. When you are always singing the king, king of glory and all that, not, not king of glory, but I worship the king and I was feeling it. I, I was in, in another place. I was in the spirit and, and a, a pure offering was going up before the Lord. As Bobby was standing here singing it, I was just thinking, pure offering. There's something going up when we acknowledge the king. When we say hallelujah to the king, that's the fragrance coming from the Gentile. You're making the name of God great. Every time you go to your job and they say, what, what makes you you? Say, I'm a believer. I believe in Jesus, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. I'm on the Lord's side. I stand for righteousness. Even though I'm flawed, God's yet using me. Even though I don't know everything, I don't know all the ways, but God is still on my side. I don't know how to do what I'm supposed to do in every circumstance, but I'm calling on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we got to get on our job. We got to open our mouth. We're flawed, but we're still chosen. Yeah, you did what you did. Yeah, you drank too much. Yeah, you smoked too many blunts. But God, Brother Gary, has a purpose for your life. Hallelujah. Yes, I did it. Yes, you were sneaking out with a, another man's husband, another man's wife or whatever. But God has a purpose for your life, Donnell. This man was off. Jacob was wrong. Jacob did things he shouldn't do. But God, Sister Shirley, in his latter years, made him the father of many nations. And we'll see later on that he wrestled with an angel. And some of you are wrestling right now. I know I'm, I know I'm on the Lord's side, but I have a propensity to do wrong things. I know I'm on the Lord's side, but I look at wrong stuff. Just stick with it. Stay with the Lord. Stay with this book. I'm telling you, it works. You're going to have things happen in your life that you don't like. Things that you, should, you think you should have, they'll be delayed. Places you think you should be able to go, you'll be denied. But stick with the book. Stay after a while. Jacob stopped lying. After a while, he got tired of him all his own self. And God broke that thing off of his life. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but stick with the Lord. There's things in your life you don't like. You wish you could get rid of. This man got tired of lying. He got tired of deceiving. He got tired of being mistreated. He got, and all of these things. But after a while, after a while, he grew into a great man of God. He was flawed, like me, like you. Yes. But he was still chosen. Katrina, he was chosen. He lied his way into a blessing. He lied his way into prosperity. But God still used him. Yes, Don't tell me what God can use and cannot use. You can be flawed on your way to a devil's hell and God can snatch you like he did the apostle Paul and bless you to be the writer to the Gentile world. Amen. Who am I talking to today? Don't give up. You that's looking at me on the zoom, don't give up. You made a lot of mistakes, but God says flawed, but still chosen. Some of us haven't been good family members. Some of us have been the, the, the type of family member that don't nobody want to be around. But I speak to you in the name of Jesus. There's a turnaround for you. You're going to find your Rehoboth. I'm speaking to somebody today. You're going to find your right place where you can blossom like a rose. I feel it in the atmosphere. And if your heart is open, it's coming to you right now. You're blossoming like a rose. Your Rehoboth is here. And I hope you find in me a man who don't look at flaws, but look at potential. 
My endeavor in this ministry is not to be a flaw finder. May you find your Rehoboth and may you know that God uses flawed people. There's no one more flawed than Jacob that I can see. Judas was bad, but Jacob, oh man, he, he was a thief. But God used him as the father of the nation that we know as Israel. And then through Jacob's son, Judah, came Jesus. Amen. And Jesus was flawless. So you can raise a righteous son even though you got flaws. Just don't let that flaw flow through to him. Everybody's standing. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God. Whew. Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Father, we thank you this morning that you cover us with the blood. You cover our flaws. You cover our ways. And you make us whole. Somebody say, I'm whole. <laughs> Today, Lord, we're wrestling with the angel. We want to be made whole. We want us, you to bless us. So we ask you, Lord, to change our name, change our DNA, change the way we think. Let the flaws be covered with the blood. That we'll do the right thing. That we'll say the right thing. In the name of Jesus. So we pray for these, your people, O oh Lord, that your hand of mercy, hallelujah, your hand of grace, hallelujah, 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 glory to God, will cover us today. Thank you for the washing of the word, Lord. Thank you that we can see you use men and women, hallelujah, that are called by your name. We're calling on you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yahweh, we love you. We praise your name. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Just wave your hand. Give him a wave off in the day. Hallelujah. Hey, thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We feel this atmosphere with gratitude. Somebody say, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. You on the Zoom call, scream it out of your mouth. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. All that you do for us, Lord, we worship you. We send up gratitude. We send up honor. We send up praise. We're so grateful. We're so grateful. We're so grateful, Lord. We're so grateful. We're so grateful. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, you send up gratitude. Something's going to change. One more time. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Come on, y'all. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Oh, ho, 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 ho. You feel that? Woo. So grateful. Yes, yes, yes.